So you want to fully control somebody else's Fire Stick, Nvidia Shield, or really any other Android device, but from the internet. Well, this window that we see here is actually the window of my Fire Stick, but I'm actually accessing it from a computer in the cloud. So from that computer using the Flakey's remote control tool, I now have complete control of my Fire Stick through the internet. So I can navigate around, I can select things, I can check the settings, I can push applications, make changes, and really just fully control my device. So in this video today, let me show you the full step-by-step -step instructions on how you can take control of somebody else's device through the internet. The only thing I will say that it is a little bit complicated. So please do watch this video to the end so you can fully understand the process and the implications of making these changes. So do take a moment to hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're started. new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Now for this process to work as a high level summary on the source side, where you're gonna be taking the control from, you need to install the Flakey's toolbox and on the target side, the place where you're going to be taking control of their device, they need to have ADB debugging enabled on their device, and they also need to forward a single port. So that's all that's needed for this process. They don't need to install any special software or do anything like that. Just these two things here, once they're done, we can then take control of their device. Okay, so to begin this process, open up your favorite browser on your computer, navigate to my website, Go to tutorials and I've updated both the files, both for the remote control toolbox and also the screen copy tool. So uh, here it is. Let's click on the ultimate Fire Stick Android TV uh, toolbox. Now the latest update of this one, what's actually changed is uh, some people actually found that there was a slight bug in that software. If your APK had spaces in the file name then and you try to upload that to your Fire Stick or your Android TV device, then the toolbox would have issues with that because it didn't really like the space in the file name. Unfortunately, Flaky was able to quickly fix that bug, and this is now the latest version of his toolbox. And again, all credit is due to Flaky for this amazing toolbox. So click on the first one, and then click on the green download button, and do the same for the screen copy tool. So the latest version is 1.17. Click on that, and what you'll get then is two zip files. So here is the toolbox, and here is the screen copy tool. Now, I didn't mention this in my last video and some people were having some issues with this. So let me give you the exact step-by-step -step instructions on how you can expand this into a new folder. So the easiest way to do that is just open up your file explorer, go to your C drive. Let's create a new folder. So right click, new folder. I'll just call this uh, ADB GUI, but you can really call it wherever you like. Let's now open that up. So we have a blank new folder. Now with Flaky's toolbox, I double click on that and I drag his application from the zip file into that new folder. So we have one new file in there. I can now close this down. I now open up the other zip file, which is the screen copy tool. And again, drag the contents, all these files, highlight all of them first and drag them into your new folder. And once you see you have a total of 14 files in your new folder, then you're pretty much good to go. And to use this toolbox, we double click on that. The first thing we always do is we click on locate ADB. And because we have that in the same folder, I can click on that, which is the new ADB GUI folder and click on open. And over here, we need to locate the screen copy tool. So again, click on that and click on this file here, click on open. Now for you to take control of any device in your home network, just type in the internal IP address of that device. So for example, my Fire Stick at my house is 192.168.0.92. Type in the port number, which is just 5555. I can now click on connect to ADB device. Once that's connected, I can now push applications to my device. I can reboot the device. I can go over here, click on my device again, click on remote control. And within a couple of seconds, I now have full control of my Fire Stick. And we can see I can move down, I can select things and all that great stuff. Now controlling devices on your home network is something that I covered in part one of this video. Part two, which is this video, is all about connecting to internet-based devices or devices outside your home network. 
Now, before we jump into that, let me give you a quick summary on networking and IP addresses, just so you can understand how this process will work. So welcome to the TD UK's crash course into basic networking, uh, port forwarding, IP address allocation. Now just imagine that this is uh, the setup in your friend's house or your customer's house or wherever you'd like to take control of their fire stick. Now typically um, in any kind of home setup, you have a, a modem and router and normally it is the same device. Now the primary purpose of this device is to provide you access to the internet, but also this device allocates private IP addresses to all of the devices in your home network. So whether that's wireless devices or devices plugged in via ethernet, this device here will allocate those IP addresses for you. And these private IP addresses are typically in the 192.168 range, or they can also be in the 10.10 .10 range. Now again, these are all private addresses, but when these devices need to get out to the internet, they use the public IP address and typically you only have one public IP address. You can have hundreds of devices in your house or with private IP addresses, but when these devices go out to the internet, they all share this single public IP address. Now you sitting over here in another country or another state or just in another house, if you want to access anything inside this private network, you have to reference that one single public IP address. So even though the fire stick is on 192.168.0.11, so if you try to use that IP address in the toolbox from here, it's not going to go anywhere. So again, for you to access anything inside this network, you have to go via that public IP address. So let's say for example, open up the toolbox on here. I type in this IP address. I type in the ADB port, which is 5555 what will happen So that request will go from your home network through the internet onto your friend's router or router. Now, typically any request coming from the internet to your router will just be blocked straight away because the router will just say that this request is trying to come in. I don't know anything about this request. It's not been authorized. I'm just gonna drop it. And that's what will happen right now if you try to use the toolbox and access your friends or your customers or your family members fire stick because unless they've set up that port forwarding it's just not going to get past the router now this is exactly where port forwarding comes in so the way port forwarding works is you set up on the router that any request coming in from the internet on a certain port and in this example is going to be port 5555 we say that don't drop that request forward that to an internal ip address and in our example, we'll use 192.168.0.11. So if you have that already set up in place on your friend's router, then the next time you use a toolbox, you enter in the public IP address, that request will go from your network through the internet onto the router. The router will say, oh, I see that you're coming in on port 5555. I have a rule for that. And that rule is I'm gonna forward your request directly onto the Fire Stick. And the first time the Fire Stick gets that request, you'll see that prompt saying that this machine is trying to make an ADB connection. Do you authorize it? You'll click on yes. And then from that point forward, anytime you try and connect back in, you'll be able to go straight to that fire stake and take full control of that device. So, and that's essentially how port forwarding works. And that is something that you'll have to do on everybody's house or wherever you want to take control of their Android device. Okay, so you're now at your friend's house. You've understood what port forwarding is. How do you now actually put that into practice, configure his router or router so you can now actually take control of his device? Now, the first thing we need to do is open up the router management page. Now, typically this is just the IP address of your default gateway. So just open up a, a command prompt. So start run, type in CMD, type in IP config. And here where you see your default gateway and this IP address here is typically the IP address of the router. So Type that into a browser. It will require some credentials. And once you've logged in, you'll then see your router's management page. Now, as you can appreciate that, you know, we have different vendors, different companies, different brands. They're all going to have their own kind of skins and layouts and, you know, themes. But ultimately, somewhere in the config, you'll see a section for port forwarding or NAT, which is network address translation. Now on my Netgear router, if I go to the advanced settings, we can see I do have a section for port forwarding. Now, as I mentioned before, all we want to say on the router is any request that comes in from the internet on port 5555, forward that request 
over to our Android device, our Fire Stick or Nvidia Shield or whichever Android device you want to take control of. Now by default, most of the devices will have standard services that you may want to host on the internet. So things like FTP or HTTP or maybe a game server. But in our case, because we want to do a custom service, which is ADB, and that's not an option here, I have to select the option for add a custom service. Now on your device, it may be something similar like add a custom port or something like that. So let's click on that now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to give the service a name. Now this is optional and it may not be like that on your device, but I'll just call this my 4K Fire Stick ADB. Now ADB uses TCP, so I'm gonna select TCP. We know the port that's gonna be coming in is 5555. And for the internal IP address, this is asking you which device is actually going to offer this service or host this service. And in our case, is going to be our Fire Stick. And the internal IP for that is 192.168.0.92. I click on that. I click on apply. And that's pretty much it, guys. So that's all of the config you have to do on the router. And again, it just means like any request coming in from the internet on this port, the router is now not going to drop it. It's going to forward it to this internal IP address. And in my example, that's the IP address of my Fire Stick. Now, just something to mention here about, you know, leaving ports open. Now, there are some security implications on that, whereby somebody could be doing a port scan and detect that port 5555 is open and maybe they'll try and connect to your device. So one thing that slightly mitigates that is, as you know, on ADB, you have to authorize the prompt. So if you were to see a random prompt on your screen saying, do you authorize this ADB connection, then obviously you would say no, because you're not expecting somebody to come into your device. And the other thing you can do if you want to be, you know, super ultra secure is don't leave this port open until you actually want somebody to connect in. So in the example of your friend phoning you for support, he can phone you and he'll tell you that he's now added this port onto his router, which means that you can now connect in and support him. Once you finish supporting him, he'll then go back onto his router's homepage and then delete that port. So that way the port is only open when you are expecting somebody to come in. So it really is up to you how you want to do this, but I just want to make sure you fully understand exactly the changes you're making on your you know, friend's device. And now the moment of truth, guys. So I'm now on my shadow cloud-based VM, which is in the internet. And we can see my current IP on that device is 85.190.80.51. So from this machine on the internet, let's see now if I can use the toolbox to access my Fire Stick. So I've started the toolbox. I've selected the ADB path and also the path for the screen copy tool. I'm now going to enter in my internet IP address and that ends in 231. I'm going to enter in the port number 5555. Let's now click on connect. And once you see this message here, we have now connected from the internet over to my Fire Stick. And we can now do all of the things I previously mentioned. I can push APKs, I can list the applications I have on my device. But the main thing is I can now go over onto the right, select the screen resolution, select the bitrate, select my device, click on remote control. And within a couple of seconds, I should now be looking at my screen even though I'm on a completely separate device. And we can see guys through the internet, I'm now controlling my device. I can use the right click to go back, go back to home. I can now look at my config. I can look at my settings, use my keyboard. Obviously you will notice some lag because you are doing this from the internet. But as you can see here, guys, I can even type stuff on my keyboard, uh, developer, and those keystrokes are going from my keyboard through the internet and over onto my Fire Stick. And we literally have full control of our device. And that device can even be an NVIDIA Shield or an Android TV device. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. Lots of you are asking for this process on how we can control these devices through the internet. It does require some extra steps, but once you have configured this once, you can fully control that device from wherever you are. So if you did find this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell and make sure you select the option for all notifications because I do regularly post updates on my community tab and you only get those notifications if you've selected the all option. So really appreciate your support and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.